Mark your calendars, save the date, and join me live on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, December 21st, 2022, for we'll play NFL trivia in our jackpot game and give away over $300 in cash prizes to our winner. Link to join below. And now, on with our feature presentation. All right, stop me if you've heard this one before. You've got a nationally televised game where the home team is a team that won the Super Bowl in the 2020s, but is disappointed massively this season and has way underperformed expectations. And the road team is a team that absolutely needs to win this game if they want to have any shot at making the postseason, as a loss just about eliminates them from the picture. So far, things are looking good for the road team, as led by their second round pick at quarterback out of the Mountain West, they lead it 13-3 after three quarters and 16-3 with just over three minutes left in the contest. You think this game is over. You think there is no possible way that the road team could blow this game. And then, completely out of nowhere, even though the game looks over and people have gone to bed, and even though the leading team has about a 99% chance at winning, everything falls apart as the home team scores a touchdown to make it 16-10. The road team goes 3-0, and out, and the home team responds by driving down the field and scoring the game-winning touchdown with under 10 seconds left to win it 17-16. If that sounds familiar, it's probably because it happened, oh, I don't know, literally on Monday. Somehow, the Saints-Buccaneers game and the Rams-Raiders game were just about identical in every way. From the losing quarterback's draft status and conference affiliation, to the team's playing and the stakes, to how the game ended, to literally the same exact scoreline the whole way through. And understandably so, as the Raiders blew yet another game that seemed impossible to blow, Josh McDaniels has been receiving a ton of heat. This experiment has failed absolutely horribly. And if the Raiders had any common sense, or if Mark Davis had any money, he would be fired by now. First off, they never should have hired him in the first place. I think just about everyone would have told you that. But at the very least, they would cut ties with him right now. Between this game, their Week 2 game against the Cardinals where they led by 16 points with 8.5 minutes left, their Week 5 game against the Chiefs where they led 17-0 midway through the second quarter, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, and their Week 9 game against the Jaguars where they led it 17-0 midway through the second quarter, it is truly baffling how the Raiders somehow lost all four of those games. Heck, if they just went 2-2 two and two in those games, and were only really bad at holding on to big leads, instead of historically bad, they would be 7-6 and six and would be right in the thick of things for a playoff spot. Because with every blown game like this, there's usually a moment where you scratch your head and wonder what the heck the head coach was doing and what he was thinking. And I saw a lot of people say that for this moment right here. Here's the situation of where we are in the game. With the Rams only having one timeout left, if the Raiders can get a first down here, the game is pretty much over, barring anything crazy. There are just 10 yards separating the Raiders from winning their fourth straight game and being right back in the playoff picture, somehow, after a 2 and 7 start. First down, and Josh Jacobs runs for a gain of 1. Rams have to burn their final timeout. Second down, and Jacobs picks up 8 yards. This is the money play right here. It's third and 1 on the 34 yard line. Pick up the first down, and the game is over. Instead, he gets stuffed. No game. Fourth down. And now, the Raiders have a decision to make. You can win the game right here if you go for it and you get it, since the Rams can't stop the clock. Instead, Josh McDaniels decides to do this. Gets it away, angles it to the far side. That's right. He decided that instead of trusting his offense in the best halfback in football right now in Josh Jacobs to pick up one measly yard and end the game right then and there, to punt the ball away and give it right back to the Rams and give them a chance to drive down the field and win the game. Sure enough, as you can probably expect, 
This backfired on them in rather spectacular fashion, as the Rams drove down the field and did this. Second and ten, Mayfield to the end zone to Jefferson. Is that possible? Touchdown! Ball game. Raiders lose. And afterwards, oh man, people were lighting up McDaniel's for what many called a cowardly decision to punt it away. How do you not go for it on fourth down to win the game? And then, trust your defense to win the game if the Rams somehow stop you and stuff Jacobs. When I say that McDaniels got lit up for this, yeah, he got blasted by analysts and fans who thought this was a fireable offense. Here's just a sample size of the many reactions to what many called a dumb decision. And if you don't believe me, my Twitter timeline looked a little something like this. Just scathing reviews with just about no one thinking that McDaniels made the right call in punting it away. Which is why it might shock you that for the second time this season, I have to come to his defense. Again, don't get me wrong, he is a really bad head coach who has no business leading a team, and he should be one and done. But I have no problem with the decision to punt the ball away on 4th and 1. I actually didn't think the call was that bad. And if you think this was the wrong call, then maybe after this, you change your mind. Because this call might not be as bad as you think it was. Welcome to In Defense Of. Let's dive right in. Before we go any further, I have to emphasize that I am solely talking about the decision to punt the ball on this 4th and 1 at the end of the game. McDaniels and the coaching staff made quite a few baffling decisions throughout the game that I cannot defend including a 4th and 1 punt in the 3rd quarter in Los Angeles territory, where you absolutely could have gone for it and could have made it a 3 possession game if you kept the drive alive, and the absolutely insane decision to play press coverage at the very end knowing that the Rams had no timeouts and had to take shots at the end zone. Like, what did you honestly think they were going to call outside of fly routes on the outside? You thought they were going to call complex routes for a quarterback that had been there a day? That was just go deep. Four verts, and you somehow didn't see it coming, even though everyone else did from a mile away. So yeah, I'm not covering any of those moves. We're just focusing on the fourth and one punt, which I thought was perfectly fine. As always, with something like this, I like to do a risk-reward analysis of the two options available, and weigh the pros and cons of each. So let's start with the first option, which is what a ton of people would have done in this spot and that is to go for it on 4th and 1 on your own 34-yard line. And I cannot deny that the reward if this play works is fantastic, because the reward is the greatest reward that you can receive. Bottom line, if you get this play to go, you win the game. No doubt about it. End of discussion. A first down gets you into victory formation. However, this comes at a giant risk. And that risk is the fact that if you don't get it, not only are you turning it over on downs and giving it right back to the Rams, but you're giving it to them with that incredibly short field. This analysis plays out totally differently if the Rams decide to put it away on the opposition's 40-yard line. But on their own 34-yard line? Sure, if you get it, you win. But if you don't get it, you give it to the Rams with a short field. And you give it to them when the clock isn't an issue whatsoever. Having to potentially drive the length of the field with no timeouts and under 2 minutes left is difficult. Having to drive 34 yards with no timeouts means nothing, and the Rams could even call some running plays and spread your defense out that way, since you'd have to be on your toes with guessing what the play is. So with the failure of not picking up one yard being huge, as you'd be giving the ball back to an offense that had been struggling all day and giving them a short field, that raises the question. How likely was it that the Raiders could have picked up a yard? Was it reasonable to assume that they wouldn't be able to get it to go? In an extreme example, it's like if I could walk away with $100 guaranteed without doing anything, or I can risk it and get $100,000 if I win. But if I lose, I have to cut off one of my fingers permanently. However, all I have to do in order to win is beat an 8-month-old in a game of basketball. Like, the risk is obviously insane of losing your finger, but the task is so easy that I would be willing to do it. 
That's the question we have to ask ourselves with the Raiders. And I honestly can't blame them for not having confidence to pick up a yard. Or at the very least, not enough confidence to warrant going for it this deep in their own territory. Literally on the very last play, they had third and one. They gave it to Jacobs, and they got stuffed. Not even 30 seconds ago, they couldn't get this play to go. There was a run earlier in the first half where Jacobs lost five yards. Later in the half, there was a run where they gave it to Jacobs at midfield, and he picked up nothing. Jacobs was not exactly gashing the Rams' defense. This was one of his quietest games of the season, relatively speaking. Sure, it's more likely than not that you would get the yard that you need to win the game, but by no means is this a guarantee. Too much went wrong on previous plays, where I can see why McDaniels thought it was a risky proposition. And if you watched the college football game between Oregon and Washington earlier this year, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, you know how risky and how dangerous it can be if something like this goes horribly wrong. Compare that to the alternative of punting the ball away. Obviously, the risk is that you're giving the ball right back to the Rams, and you're giving them a chance to win it and drive down the field. And if this was the Raiders going up against a team like the Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes on the other end, or the Bills with Josh Allen on the other end, then I would be way more critical of McDaniels, because field position doesn't really mean anything to those guys. You'd have to be living under a rock for the last year to not realize that. But you're giving the ball back to the Rams in awful field position with Baker Mayfield and an offense that had scored three points through the first 56 minutes of the game. This Rams team was being led by a quarterback who quite literally was not on the team three days before. He just arrived in Los Angeles the other day. For some perspective, I try and upload twice a week on my college football channel, Jaguar Gator 8, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. The videos drop on Monday and Friday, so shameless plug, a new one is dropping today at 6 p.m. Eastern. The last time I uploaded a video, Mayfield was not on the Rams. I haven't taken any days off. He was on the Panthers, or was about to get released by the Panthers. There had been zero World Cup matches played in between the time Mayfield was not on the Rams and the time of this game. That's how short of a period we were talking about. He probably didn't know the entire playbook, because how could you when you got there a day ago? Through three quarters, the Rams only had 154 yards of offense. You've got a quarterback who has to run a two-minute, no-huddle offense, who barely knows the plays, who is leading a struggling offense and a struggling team, and who had no timeouts to work with. Obviously, it didn't work out. But I'll take my chances with a guy having to drive 90 or so yards under those circumstances. And I'm sure most of you would do the same. Him having to drive 34 yards if you don't get the first down? Not as hard as having to drive 90 yards, or in terms of what actually happened because the punt was fantastic, 98 yards. The Raiders dared Baker Mayfield, one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL this season in just about every stat, to lead his offense down the field under improbable circumstances, where he didn't even know the names of all of his teammates. Yeah, I take those chances. If he beats you... He beats you, and you don't deserve to win. But I'd much rather have him earn it than just give him the short field to work with. No, you can't win the game automatically by punting, but you can pretty much guarantee the win unless your defense does something stupid, like slap the ball away and get called for an unsportsmanlike conduct, or commit a penalty at a bad time, or play press coverage in a spot that doesn't call for press coverage whatsoever, or unless Baker does something miraculous like throw a beautiful 32-yard pass that was covered tightly and likely has no business being caught, or a combination of two or three of those things. I am absolutely taking my chances with a fourth and one punt there, daring Baker to drive the offense down the field and do something unconventional. Just to recap, by punting the ball on fourth and one, you set up a situation where the offense, led by a quarterback who has not been good all season, an offense that has been struggling all day, and led by a guy who literally just got there in the middle of the week and had minimal time to prepare, had to drive 98 yards down the field 
with no timeouts and about 90 seconds left. If you can't win the game under those circumstances, I don't know what to tell you. Because even though McDaniels is a terrible head coach who made some questionable decisions throughout this game, and has made some questionable decisions all season, when you consider all of these facts, this is definitely a decision that you can make a defense for. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com. And be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to JaguarGator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.